Hello, this is uh, this is a audio recording for uh, the Flamingo Writers Guild. It's our Myanmar Literacy Project. The goal of this project is to collect information, firsthand accounts, pictures, uh, anything about what's going on in Myanmar as you know the military rule unfolds. And with me, I have a citizen of Myanmar. Um, he interviewed with me, uh, well, actually me and Joe through Moot, and he's going to be doing another episode with us again. Um, but he's interested in talking about things and giving us an account of what's going on. So thank you very much for doing this. Hello. Um, so let's, let's start at the beginning. You know, a year ago when we talked, everything was just fresh right out the gate. I mean, we talked like 36 hours after the Junta, the yeah. military took over the government. So what, what's happened in that time? How have things progressed? So things progressed quite quickly. Uh, like people started protesting peacefully and people were just like, you know, to get international attention, they will wear, even, they will even wear costumes and hold out signs. signs that, that's so that the UN will know the situation here and that people doesn't agree with their military. <clears throat> but uh, things progress really, things turn out really fast. Yeah, you, like the military started shooting the people with fire trucks, fire hydrants and And then, not uh, about a week later, they was they started shooting people with rear bullets and uh, using assault rifles. Uh, about about a hundred young people, young people were killed during that time. Every day, like I think we have we have currently lost count, but th during a first few months. About 1,000 and uh, people in their 20s were killed. Holy cow. So about 1,000 people in the first month, you said? Uh, not in the first month. I think in three months, about 1,000 were killed. OK. Uh, they, it's even, it's quite funny. Like, they had that really tough, you know? like. Protest if you dare to die and stuff. They were yelling in the street. They they will swear that the people who are protesting peacefully, like people, there are some people who will sing songs. There were people who play instruments. There were people who were <clears throat> just holding out signs and people that are raising their three finger signs as protest. And they were they just shoot down the people yelling, do this, like continue this if you dare to die. Like yeah. they were trying to add tough, you know? Right. So uh, uh, a lot of the young people are very passionate about politics. Like they doesn't want the next generation to go through the education, the low level education, uh, <clears throat> like they don't want them to be mistreated. So a lot of the young people have left their home and joined the resistance. Like they went into the forest as training camp and the <clears throat> now there are wars going on. Like, like there have, and people who doesn't dare to leave their house, there will be applications or website where you can watch the ads that are played there and all the money will be donated to those people. Mm -hmm. like. Would you, how many of, of young people, especially on the internet, how many people are active on the internet and talking about it? Because it, I feel like it's gotta be significant. It is like, uh, for now, uh, uh, the number have lower, of course, like a lot of the people even act like 
the politics doesn't affect them. Like that is very disappointing, but there are still a lot of people who are trying really hard. Uh, I'm sure there are hundreds of thousand people that are still actively trying to help the situation on the internet. Okay. Um, there, was a, there was a report out at the beginning of February this month that said since it started that 1,500 people have died and about 9,000, almost 9,000 people have, are currently being detained. Um, does, that, does that number sound, sound right? Is it, do those numbers sound too low or too high or is that about accurate? Uh, it's definitely too low uh, for the death at least. I don't know for sure about the people that were arrested, but just, the, just yesterday, about 50 people that are just living there, like who are, who are not even participating in protests or any political event were killed just because there's a resistance camp near the, near the village. Okay. Like, the, they sometimes just kill people mindlessly if they get hurt in, in the war. Like, so about a week ago, the military lost 20 of their soldier. So the military just went, went and burned down a village near them. How many people were in the village? Uh, I don't know about the village population, but uh, I, I heard that about 20 villagers were died. Uh, 20 villagers died in the fire. Okay, that's awful. Um, how, how are people resisting? Yeah, uh, as you know, I, I, I believe internet resistance doesn't count that much. Like the military doesn't care about, the, about it. But a lot of uh, there, there, um, like uh, you know, how should I put this? People can resist. People can people cannot show resistance in public that much. So they will make a they will arrange a very small protest here and there like only about 30 or 50 people. And they will have to go in every direction really quickly before the walls reach the, the, walls reach the military. So I can't say that for sure if uh, how many people are resist, currently resisting. Okay, yeah, they, they probably don't want people to know how many people yes. are resisting. Um, now I saw a video, it was, it was kind of neat. Um, because they're the Myanmar subreddit, they, there's a lot of stuff that's posted there about what's going on. And one of the videos I saw, there was uh, like a flash protest. Like there, there were people walking yes. kind of on the street. They came out and they did this big flash protest and they, they chanted and they did it for like three minutes and then scattered. Yes. And uh, it was, there's a lot of those. You, you said there's a lot of those? Yes. Uh, it will. Uh, it's not daily, but about every two or three days, there will be at least two, one, one of those uh, in different parts of towns. How, how is the general, how is the reaction from the general public to demonstrations like that? Uh, the general public really support the resistance. Like uh, when there are flash, pro, flash protests like those, uh, some of them, a lot of the people who live near them will run out of their house and camp uh, and join join in or raise a three finger sign as a support. Three fingers, and just the first three fingers. Yes, just the first three fingers. Like it's the it's the sign of the protest man. Now, okay, finger fingers point points of the fingers. Do they go up or down? But they go up. Okay. Okay. W for winning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, now you 
you had said that your parents were got arrested at one point. I think your dad at one point, and he's out now. Uh, no, my my dad was only on the list to be arrested, but he has some connection. You know, he he used to be the head of mining association for Man, for Mandalay in Mandalay region. So okay. He has some connection and he got, uh, he called some people and he was removed from the list to be arrested. But for my mom, uh, she, uh, our house was raided, so she couldn't escape. Uh, even me and my girlfriend were, <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> were detained and had, had to stay at the state, state police station for a day. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what, what do you think would have happened if you were there when they raided? Would they have brought you in too? Um, no, I was there when they raided. Like, they just rushed in our door and with a warrant and just took all of us. Uh, but a lot, so there were some resistant kids that, that, stay, that stay in our house, right? So, so they they all protected me like they all knew they would die you know yeah they will get killed but they all all of them say I wasn't involved and that I don't know anything so they let me go they let me go good good now you you so, when you say they have a list is this a public list like do they have a website and they're like here are the people we're looking to arrest or how do you find out about who's on it uh they don't have a website they will share the list among themselves like they they print out the list and just share among them but there are some of the people who still walk under them but that's about the but suppose the resistance, so they would tell the public. Okay. Like they will release the list and stuff. Yeah. What what things have have the military tried to win people over, or are they just focused on suppression? Uh, they do both. I uh, I have I think like they will fix the roads and stuff like super very superficial, you know. Uh. But also very stay <clears throat> oppressing. Like they wouldn't. There are some roads that they wouldn't let people travel. Uh, travel. Uh, like they wouldn't even let people come close to to the, their buildings, because there are a lot of bombing going around the country. Like the resistance will drive by and throw the bomb throw some bombs in them and drive away so they don't let people come near their buildings. Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, have they tried to, I don't even know, like what, what was the, what's the, the, the running excuse that they give? What's their propaganda like? And what, what, how do they, what do they say for their reason for doing what they did? <laughs> Their propaganda is very silly, but uh, <laughs> the people who believe them were taught, taught those propaganda things they were children, so they believe. But they basically say that the Aung San Suu Kyi was trying to erase Buddhism from the, from the country and welcome the Western countries and Christianity and steps into the country, but so they, so those people believe that the, <clears throat> the people who are resisting are trying to corrupt the country by welcoming Western cultures and stuff. So it's, it's conservative authoritarianism? Or, or, yes. Or th okay. Yes. Uh, like they are like uh, conservative from the US. Yeah. That's okay. And and you you had mentioned you had said that there were there were pockets of civil war being fought that had broken out. 
Um, now, is it is it kind of like there's there's conflict that's spread out through the whole country? It does conflict in one part of Myanmar look different than another another region? Uh, there throughout the there throughout the country, like in in the state that are close to other uh, uh, that are close to the border, there will be bigger civil war. Like there will be a lot more resistance since they they are easy access to guns. But in in like in the middle part of the country, there are some civil war, but they are very small. Like only about ten or twenty people will be killed, and it will be over. Okay. Currently, they are already uh, the resistant force have <clears throat> already take, took control over Sakai, which is very prominent state of the country. Okay. What are, are there any significant events that have happened in the last year that you want people to know about? I just think it's how much they try to suppress the media. Like they wouldn't let they still wouldn't let people use Facebook or social media without VBN. And if they are VBN, and they will they will be checked. There will be checkups on the street, like they will stop their motorcycles or cars and ask to check their phones. If they are VBA in their phone, they will be arrested and have to pay money to get relief. So, all right, yeah. Um, how is it? What what's the difference between uh, living in? A city like Mandalay versus being in a rural area where there's less people. In the rural area, the state is uh, their state is really bad. Like for uh, since I'm living in a city, they can't do whatever they want easily. Like sure, they still arrest people, but they can easily kill off people, and they can't hide the news that much. But in the rural area, they they just kill people just out of nothing. Like, even if it's just a small case, they will just kill the people. Like, there was a case where a house <clears throat> that let the resistant kids in, that, live, that let the resistant kid live in them, and they raided the house. But uh, the, their neighbor went, uh, came out of their house and looked at the situation and their neighbors were killed too. Oh my God. Good Lord. What, what other incidents have you heard about? Uh, there was a case where a pregnant woman was donating to the resistant kid, kids. And during that time, the military surrounded the building and trying to raid the, raid the house. But they all jumped off from the Fifth story tall balcony, and they all suicided. Oh. Like that—that that was a pretty big case. Like, especially, especially since she was pregnant too. So, yeah, I think that that shows how passionate people are, and people are trying not not to show weakness to the military. Sure. What is? How do people feel generally? Uh, in terms of hope, are they hopeful about the future? Uh, a lot of people are hopeful. Like even my mom, who's in prison, when she write, when she write that, that she will, she will always add like, uh, let let's meet, let's meet again when the, when they are gone and the things are peaceful. So a lot of people are very hopeful, and they also think it will be over in some in a few months like people think them <clears throat> it will either be over in a few months or at least in a year that's, that's how people thought about covid too <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and some some more measured people what do they think uh, excuse me come on so people who are more 
practical about the situation or, or I guess less hopeful? What kind of timelines do they think? Uh, the people who are hopeful just, I think they just act like nothing has changed, you know? There are some people that are still <clears throat> just posting memes or making fun of the situation on the internet, right? There are a lot of them also like, they, everyone act like, like they, they are interested in them at first, but when, since it has been over a year, a lot of them just act like the situation doesn't relate them. Okay. Now, there, there, so the Economist wrote an article and it was called Myanmar's generals have united the country against themselves. And the thesis of the article, you know, it talks about all the obstacles that the junta is facing, you know, and, and yeah. one of the things that it said, it brought up an event where um, last June, Mr. Zin Tet um, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I, I'm butchering the pronunciations, <laughs> but he, he apologized and asked the Rohingyas for, for forgiveness. Um, so I would, I would, I'm, what I'm asking is, you know, how are the Rohingyas doing? Um, how tenuous does the military's grasp seem to be? Because um, the article makes it seem like it could collapse at any time, you know? And I'm, I'm curious to how it looks from your perspective. Uh, I think the military doesn't dare touch the Rohingyas for, Rohingyas for now because it will make the situation international. Like they don't, they doesn't want the other, they doesn't want other countries to involve. So they doesn't touch the Rohingyas, and they only mainly focusing on the <clears throat> on taking down the resistance. And I think. They could collapse really fast as as soon as the some of the generals uh, give up. Like they just need some pressure, I think, from my perspective, because a lot of them are cowards. Uh, I'll be honest. Like when it's their turn to suffer, they just give up really easily. <laughs> okay, well that's promising at least. Yeah. Um, how's the economy? Uh, it's, uh, the, econ the economy is really bad right now. Like even my dad used to work as a mining, uh, half mining company, but we, we can't continue those right now. And <clears throat> since continuing them would need us to cooperate with the military. So we have, we stopped working there. And me and my girlfriend are just making some, you know, homemade soaps and stuff and selling that. A lot of people who had to quit their jobs started doing their own business, little business too. Like we were, people were sell foods and uh, people were sell foods and snack and homemade dishes and were deliver them to their home. At, <clears throat> Uh, where juice delivery service and it's just that a lot of people who have quit their jobs have lost their homes too because a lot of the houses were given by the government to the uh, office workers so some people have became homeless in a lot of cases that's a shame because the, the another thing that article, article mentioned was that of civil servant jobs, you know, working for the government, 400,000 people resigned in protest or were fired. Yes. And uh, that, they that were was... also forcibly removed their, from their houses too. Oh my God. Well, and then, then with it probably comes, I mean, what about access to medical care? Because I mean, in our country, we're, our health care is tied to our jobs. Is it the same there? Uh, no. Uh, we have uh, some, uh, we have a public hospital in every town, but uh, our jobs doesn't pay for medical care. 
no insurance or anything like you just walk there and you get paid and if you need something and you go to if you need something and you don't have money you go to the public hospital and it will be very cheap <laughs> you know i have to say <laughs> i wasn't expecting to hear that myanmar's health medical <laughs> medical system is better than a lot better than ours <laughs> <laughs> So move to Myanmar, guys. <laughs> oh, that, well, that's that's good. I'm glad to hear that because it would be a shame if, if what well, what about people who are protesting and are injured or, or shot by the government? Are are they allowed uh, to? They just through? have to use first aid kit. Like, they can't go anywhere. Well, the hospital. Unless that, uh, there are some uh, private doctor who would. Who would, who would care for them for, uh, without getting any money? There are some, but, but <clears throat> there are volunteers who will work for them and uh, assist, uh, assist first aid kit, but they can go to hospital. And if they are fatally injured, uh, they just have to be hopeful. How, how would the what steps has the military taken to know if someone is be, at, at a hospital was for the resistance? Uh, I don't. I think they just don't care. Like hello, your sound cut out there. I think you dropped you. And let people. I didn't even let people have oxygen tank. Like, I, I'm they, sorry. they just your, kept your sound cut out there, so we missed we missed a big part of your answer. Oh, sorry, that's okay. Your your sound cut out there after uh, I had the, the question. Oh oh, sorry. Uh, the internet has gone to shit since the military is trying to take down those websites that are that you, where you can watch at and give uh, donate money. So uh, the internet is really shit right now. I I can't even play games. Oh no, that's uh, another tragedy, <laughs> man. Uh, <clears throat> so uh -huh. even uh, back when COVID was spreading really fast, like hundreds of people were dying every day, uh, the military wouldn't let people. If, <clears throat> the military wouldn't provide people the oxygen tanks they have in their hospital. Like people will have to buy from other people that are willing to sell them. And the, even the oxygen tank prices jump really high. Uh, so a lot of people just have to go stand in a line where there will be don some people who are donating oxygen. Right. Oh, geez. <clears throat> okay. Now people will have to go stand in a line since like 3 a.m. in the morning just to get some oxygen so that the patient can stay alive. They will no help provided that they are definitely trying to reduce max uh, oxygen tanks and other supplies so that people can focus on protesting and have to focus on caring for the COVID COVID patient. Okay. All right. Um, now, because I one of the another another thing the article mentioned was that it, it has a four cuts method where it's severing anybody that helps with food funding intelligence and recruits. So I imagine, you know, the <laughs> any sort of medical care or <laughs> any alleviating problems of any kind is, is, is they'll go after them. Um, it, it, there, there are four main rebel groups. What are the differences between those rebel groups and are, are they using the same tactics or, or what tactics have been effective? Hello? I think his internet cut out again. Oh, 
know. Do, 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 about 30 minutes in. Okay. Um, I'll just leave it up. Maybe it'll reconnect. Hey, there you are. I'm sorry, the internet just cut off. That's okay. That's okay. I, I can cut out that part. There's like two minutes of silence. It'll definitely be easy to find in the audio recording because there'll be no spikes. <laughs> it's me quietly looking at my phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, I, I did have a question I wanted to ask. Um, okay. The so there, from what I understand, there are four main rebel groups, and the old politicians of the NUG have been fleeing to those rebel groups for as kind of like a safe haven so they don't get arrested. Um, so my question is, are the are there more than four? Like, how many are there to your knowledge? Um, what are the differences between the different rebel groups and what tactics have been effective in resisting the military? Uh, the four major rebel groups has always been there. Uh, it wasn't because of the coup, like they were trying to <clears throat> get their state as their own. Like they were trying to rule their state for themselves without the government involvement. Uh, but for now, uh, a lot of them have joined each, joined each other, like they would help each other with uh, <clears throat> firearms and grenades and such. So <clears throat> it, it, has be, it has evolved into two sides for now. Like. Yeah, and, and enemy of my, you know, 
enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and, and do you see any weaknesses in the in the military? Do you feel like their grip is tenuous? Uh, for now, not not yet. Like there are some that that run away from their <clears throat> that run away from the military, but a lot of them doesn't show any sign of retreating for now. Like they they doesn't seems to be giving up anytime soon. Yeah, and a lot of the people also hold a lot of uh, a lot of grudges like even when they <clears throat> a lot of the people state that even if they give up and surrender they still wouldn't allow them to live kind of thing like, the situation is very tense yeah among the people but still a lot of the uh, <clears throat> a lot of people just uh, there are a lot of people stay who are uh, stay silent to like they wouldn't speak up or uh, decide which side they are joining. Yeah, and, and is it is it a con does it feel what does it feel like to go through a normal day? Does it is is there constant fear? Or is it just something you get used to? Uh, there constant fear. I think because even if you are just driving your motorcycle, they will try, they will stop or find any problem, they could arrest you with it. Just so that the uh, left at home can come take them by giving them money. Like there were cases where even if the uh, pedestrian have all the information information like license and stuff, they will still arrest them and ask for money to be released. Like they are being held hostage. Okay. All right. Um, and it has the international community been any help? Have, have you heard anything or? Uh, there are a lot of support on the internet but uh, I'll be honest, uh, uh, Indonesian attention doesn't help that much. Like unless they are planning to invade the country and take out the military, it doesn't help and match. Yeah. Uh, uh, they can they, they can support by donating money, I guess, but I I haven't heard of such cases. Okay. Yeah, and I mean it's not it's impossible to get humanitarian aid in and I mean even if I have an interest or I can drum up interest with people around me. We can listen to experiences, we can encourage other people to write about it and learn about it, but I mean I can't physically go there and beat up the yeah. military myself. <laughs> That's very understandable. Like you can just risk your life for other people you don't know easily, you know? Like there, there are a lot of the a lot of the kids who run away from your, their homes and homes and join the resistance are really passion have to be really passionate about the country, country future. Like even I'm disappointed myself, like I can't do much other than spreading information on the internet or helping you guys spread more information. Like just that uh, I can't do much, like I can't have, I don't have enough money to spare others to donate to. So there isn't much, as you can, like I can expect other people from the, uh, people from the other country to help, help too. And that's the thing is there's, there's a lot of there, there there are a lot of places that have it rough and you know when I talk to when I talk to people I have a friend who's really interested in South America and they 
they're tuned into what's going on in South America. And I was talking to them about Myanmar. And, you know, I, I felt like they, the number of people that have room for empathy like that, that's already limited. But when I was talking to my friend, I, I didn't absorb all of the empathy and motivation they had for Brazil and they, they or, you know, South America, and they didn't have all the empathy, you know, like the, the motivation I have for learning about Myanmar. And I think it's difficult to find a group of people, like a, a large subset of people that's large enough to really drive something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Coney 2012 was a global phenomenon and that was 10 years ago. And I think that might be the, the last like really big internet upset. I mean, the, Taiwan was really big for a couple of years or for, you know, but it was, it was on people's minds. People vaguely yes. knew that they were protesting, even if they didn't pay attention to politics. You know what I mean? Yes. I think it's uh, in, for social media, like such topic will be trending for some months and people will just forget. Like that's for every case. People will just forget in some months or maybe a year at best. Yeah. Since then, there is so much information on the internet, people just can't, just can't focus on one subject for a long time. Now, if, if people you know, said to you, hey, what kind of information should I be absorbing? Or where, where can I go to find this information? Or what aspect of the resistance should I care about? What would you tell them? Um, for the information, I think it's very hard since this is a third world country. People don't use websites that much. Uh, and since English is in their first language, uh, a lot of the information will be in Burmese. So it's very hard, for get, hard to get the information out. Like even <clears throat> there are some news websites, but wait a second. There's a website in my bed. Let me search it up. Okay, and we can we can post, you know, information. I I'd like to take whatever you give me and post it, so we have that with this recording. Do you see my new star, Blue Bama? I might with it. I am a. So I can send you a link that, that the news, there's a news website that I can send you a link, but it isn't popping up right now. That's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll send it to me when you can and we'll put it up with this. Because what I'm gonna do, um, I'd like to, I, I wanna make an archives that other people can go through. So this re recording will be with it and then pictures and things will go with it. Well, I'm gonna stop recording now because I'm gonna be editing this and cutting this all out. But I'm gonna stop recording for the moment. Okay. Um, so I would say, if you have anything to say, say it now and we can do this again. Like we can do this as often as we want, you know? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think it's just that uh, I was arrested and brought to the police station. And I say, <clears throat> it is very possible that I could have died. Um, and the, the, <clears throat> the people who were arrested with me all protected, protected me and my girlfriend. Like they all, uh, like, I'll be honest, I helped some of, I helped them with some of the steps, like, you know, hiding some stuff and yeah. Shit. So they all told them that I didn't know anything and I wasn't involved in any aspect. So the 
the military let let me go and drop me off drop me off at my house they even took both of my um uh, they even took my my car and my grandpa's car like they just took them and they are using them now <laughs> oh god that's good lord I, I assume they didn't pay for them <laughs> of course not. uh i we we'd have to pay them just to get them back right oh it's awful i'm yeah. so glad that you and your girlfriend are safe and still with us because that is a terrifying situation Yes, I, I was pretty sure even my mom wouldn't survive. She's over 50 years old, but there are a lot of cases where uh, old, old people were killed too. So I was pretty sure my mom would have died there, but you know, she survived miraculously. And I, how should I put it? It's a lot of pressure, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was with my girlfriend, so I couldn't just do some do something like I just couldn't tell the military about my opinion while I was arrested, while I was in in the police station and stuff. Uh, I had to agree with them, even though obviously I hated them. So <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, you know, during that time. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't stay at my home because even though they let me go, I had, uh, they were still tracking me. Like they were checking if anything, if anyone from the resistance will come talk to me. Uh, visit my house so I had to move around the country I had to go me and my girlfriend had to go stay at my relatives and such across the country so during that time it was very stressful but uh, for now I think since my mom is safe and healthy and <clears throat> now I'm depressed so I think that's enough for now. I, I, I couldn't hope much. Yeah, and, and besides, you know, your, your, what are your options? Like you go out and you dig a hole out in the middle of nowhere and, and hope they don't find you or you comply the best you can. Yes, I had to comply and just, you know, even I had to agree with that I'm talking shit about my parents and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. And and I, I got the link that you sent. It's, it, it looks, it's a very- uh, Can you check it? It's in English too, which is, which is excellent. Yes. Excellent. Okay. I think that's like the only website that's in English, that's a news, news, news website that's in English. Okay. Now, um, what about what about uh, uh, Myanmar's immediate neighbors like China, Bangladesh, Japan? Like what what what's going on with them? Are, are... Uh, I think China support their military gen military because you know their military doesn't care much about the country. Like during the uh, while they were ruling over the country in the past, they just focus on making themselves rich. Like, the richest people in the country were from from the military. So they just sell part of the countries to China, like mining site and resources. Yeah. They just sell to China. So China supports the military. Like really obviously. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and a lot of the other countries send their condemnation to the military pad. That's that's it. Like, yeah, like they can't do much too. No, Bangladesh is not going to be sending soldiers, and that yeah. wouldn't solve the problem. If anything, it might. If someone else invaded, it might start. <laughs> yeah, people are going to wind up joining the military side. It's like, okay, well, now we need to band together and fight the invader. Yeah, 
like uh, the people who support the military, like really believe that other religions will destroy the country. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here. Please, you're always welcome back, and and we'll. You know, I'd like to record more to get you know the state of things. If you know other people that'd be interested in recording, send them. Um, all right.